Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Rampant Design Tools and I'm back again with another tutorial. This time we're going to take the tutorial that I had just done recently in Adobe's After Effects and we're going to turn it around a little bit and I'm going to show you how we're going to do the exact same technique inside of Premiere Pro. Now one thing that I do want to do in this lesson is I want to change things up a little bit and use a couple other tools. For example, we're going to integrate Photoshop in this tutorial and we're going to integrate a third-party plugin so that you can see how we can change this technique up a little bit depending on the tools that you have at your disposal. Now, much like we did in our previous lesson, I'm going to be using two elements from Rampant Design Tools. One is an embers element and the other is a 4K smoke effect. Now, one thing I want to point out about the embers element that we are using is that it is not one that comes standard from Rampant Design Tools. What I actually did was I combined a few different embers elements together to create a new element that we're going to use. And if you want to see how I did that, you can definitely check that out in the After Effects version of this tutorial. All right, now before we go on, I do want to point something out that I think is very important, and that is when you decide to purchase either a Rampant Design Tools element specifically, or maybe you've decided to purchase an entire drive full of these great Rampant Design Tools elements, it's going to be tricky to get in and find just that exact element that you want to use. Ah, it might be tricky if we didn't have the Rampant Previewer. The Rampant Previewer is an app for iOS devices that you're going to be able to use to very quickly and easily find elements inside of packages, whether you have those packages or not, right there on your phone or on your tablet. Now, the great thing is, is that when you see the app is actually very small because it relies on Wi-Fi to get the previews of all of these elements. So assuming you've got your device and a Wi-Fi connection, you'll be able to preview these elements to find just the right one for you to use in any production that you're going to be working on. All right, so let's get started. And what I'm going to do is just Command Tab into Premiere Pro. And here are the two elements that we're going to be working with. We have our smoke element and we have our embers element, okay? And with our smoke element, you'll notice that the actual element sort of ends itself down at around the seven second mark, right about here, okay? Now we're gonna adjust that once we get it in our timeline. So we're gonna take our 4K smoke, which I should point out, if I come down to the properties for this clip, it is not actually 4K anymore. It's 1920 by 1080, 23976, and it is a ProRes file. Just that's a bit easier for us to work with. What I'm going to do is take this element, I'm going to drag it and drop it down into the Create New Item button, so it creates me a timeline that's going to match the parameters of the clip that we dragged and dropped on top of it. Now, I did mention that this element sort of ends at around the seven second mark, so what I'm going to do is right about there, I'm just going to blade it, and we're just going to take the end off, and I'm going to right click on it, and we're going to adjust its speed slash duration. I'm just going to make the duration 10 seconds long. Because the duration of my embers is 10 seconds, I just want everything to line up. Let's take our embers element, there we go. Now, we're going to combine these two items together using a transfer mode. Now, before I do that, I do need to remove the color from our embers because we want everything to be in black and white until the point where we're going to add the color to the final background composite. Okay, so let's double click on our clip here. I'm going to come to the effects control window and we're going to come over here to our effects tab and I'm going to type in Lumetri color. Now, Lumetri, Lumetri, it's sort of tomato, tomato, so you know where I'm going with this. Now, we're going to take the color effect. I'm just going to drag it and drop it over here into the effects control window. We want to come to that basic correction and right down to the bottom of basic correction, right down here to saturation, we're just going to pull the saturation out altogether. Okay, I can twirl that back up now and we're now going to come to our blend mode and we're going to do this as an additive blend mode. There we go. Very nice. Okay. Now, the next part that we're going to add is our grid. Now, there's a few ways that we can add the grid. We could add the grid as an actual grid with the horizontal and vertical lines. But the problem is that if we want to match what had been done in the original Doom loading screen, the grid was actually made up of small circles that made up the grid going horizontal and vertical. Now, in the After Effects version of this tutorial, I show you a great free way to do that technique inside of Adobe's After Effects. In this lesson, I thought I'd just change things up a little bit and show you how we can do it with a third party effect. But before we do that, I actually need a layer for us to apply to. I'm just going to take a layer of black video. And the effect that I want to use is from Boris Effects, and it is their particle 
array 3D. Now it always helps if I can spell array properly. There we go. I'm just going to take it, drag it, and drop it down onto our layer of black video. Now you'll see there is particle array. Now you'll notice we got a bit of depth going on with our array here, which I want to remove. So let's do our adjustments to the actual array itself here. I'm just going to put the number of Z particles to be, appropriately enough, just one. I only want one plane of our XY particles happening here. Okay, I'm now going to adjust the master scale to scale that way out. And then let's add a little bit more particles. I'll put this about 18, I think. I think that's pretty good. There we go, very nice. Now let's talk about the actual particles themselves. I'm gonna twirl that down and instead of the sphere shape that you see that we have going on here, what I'm gonna do is just drop that down and we're gonna change that to be 3D disks. It just makes it a little bit more proper from what I had seen in that load screen animation. Now this is also a little bit too big, so I think what I'm gonna do is just adjust the size a little bit to about there, I think, okay? Now I can get it and change the color if I want to, but I'm okay with that color being gray. Now something else that I should point out is you'll notice that we have the built-in lights turned on, so you'll see that it's a little bit brighter up here in the upper left, so I'm gonna turn that off and just leave everything gray. Now one other thing that I do need to do is that we're gonna get in and add a vignette effect to this entire element. Now I could do it at this point with each element. I'm gonna do it at the end as an overall effect, okay? And I'm gonna do that once I have everything taken down into a nested sequence. Now, keep in mind that by doing that, if you don't put anything behind your nested sequence, it's going to be transparent. I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second, okay? So let's now get in and let's add the color element to our animation, okay? I'm just gonna right click, we're gonna add a new track. We don't want anything else other than a one video track and we're gonna place it after video layer three. And let's take a new color layer. And what we're gonna do is just use a color matte element, I'm gonna say okay, and the element is actually gonna have an RGB value of 225 in the red, nothing in the green, and nothing in the blue. And we're just gonna adjust the darkness of this right to about there, and I'm gonna say okay, we'll call this blood red, okay. We're gonna take blood red, we're gonna put it as the topmost layer, there we go. And we're now ready to take this element, again, we're going right back to these transfer modes. You'll see how powerful these transfer modes are as we create this element. I'm gonna come down to an overlay transfer mode and you'll see now that we've created a very cool effect, okay? Now there's a couple ways that we can do this next step. Now the easiest way to do it would be to add a black layer above and then to do our vignette from there. And I'll show you how that's gonna work in just a second. But what I wanna show you is how a lot of people would do this effect, okay? I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna undo this in just a second. We're just gonna right click and what we're gonna do is just nest these elements down. We'll just call this temporary, okay? And what people would do now is with this element, they would come, they would grab their ellipse tool, okay? I'm just gonna stretch this out right now for the purpose of you seeing what's going on here. We'll just stretch it out all the way to the edges here. And what I'm gonna do with this element is I'm now going to export it to the desktop. Now I'm gonna export it as a PNG file, and I'm gonna say okay, we'll just call this Doom. I should rename this sequence once we get back in, okay? We'll say okay, and I'm gonna head to the desktop. Now you're gonna see that when I preview this on the desktop, we have our element, but then we have this white area that's going on around it. So what exactly is happening? Well, what I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna open this in Photoshop to show you that even though I've gone in and masked this out, the background is still technically transparent, which is not what I would really rather have. I'd really rather just have this as one composited element with black as the background. So what we're gonna do here is I'm going to leave Photoshop, because we're gonna come back to Photoshop in just a second. I'll come back into Premiere. Again, we're just gonna undo what we just did here, just to get everything right back to our multiple layers, and we're gonna add a new layer. Let's add one more layer of video here. And with this layer, we're gonna head right back to our black video, okay? We're gonna take our black video, stretch it all the way down, and with the black video selected, we're heading right back to our opacity, okay? We're just gonna stretch this out. I'm not gonna stretch it out too far. I think I'm gonna stretch it out to about there, okay? 
and we're just going to send this all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom, except we got a bit of a problem going on here where I have the wrong thing masked out. What I would rather have masked out is the outside of the mask, not the inside. So let's just take our mask and invert it. Now, I had the safe titles up specifically for the reason of creating the mask. So what I'm going to do is just turn off the safe margins so that we can see everything now. And I'm simply going to take our mask and I'm going to feather this right out kind of like that. Okay, so now what's going to happen is that if we end up exporting this back to the desktop, I'm just going to call it test for right now, as a PNG file and I say save, you'll now see that the element looks exactly the way that we expect that it will look. Okay, I'm just going to delete both these elements and I did say that I was going to rename this sequence and we're just going to call this doom loading screen. Okay, now just for the purposes of keeping everything as simple as we can, I'm going to take these layers and we're going to nest them down and we're just going to call it appropriately enough background. Okay, so now let's get in and let's create the doom font that's going to go over top of our background layer. Now again, because I want to change things up a little bit and just talk about a few different techniques, we're going to head to Photoshop for me to show you how we're going to create that doom text. All right, now before we command or alt tab into Photoshop, I do want to point out that I have a texture here that we're going to be using inside of Photoshop. Now, I have a texture here. You can pretty much use any generic white or black texture that you're going to want to use for your version of this tutorial, okay? So let's head into Photoshop, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this background layer black. Okay, just because I like to work with my white text on a black background. And we're going to remove that background before we're done. Now, I also want to point out that we're using a fantastic free font that I found on the internet called, appropriately enough, Amaze Doom. Now I'm just going to come in and we're just going to type out Doom. I'm going to make sure I have caps lock on here. And I'm just going to grab it. We're just going to drag it south a little bit. And you'll notice now we have sort of the left edge of the D that's the, what peaks down to the bottom. But for the M, it doesn't do the same thing. It's actually not the correct way. It should be the other way with the peak heading down the right-hand side, sort of like a mirror opposite of what it's doing on the left. Well, what's great about this font is that if I select this M, we can come up to our character dropdown, and with the Amaze Doom font, you'll notice that we actually have the ability to come in and not only choose a left justified version of it, but also a right justified version of it as well. So if I select that version of it, you'll now see that we have the M and the D doing exactly what they should be doing. Now we're just going to make the O's a little bit smaller here. I'm just going to shift the baseline up a little bit. I think that's going to be good for the purposes of what we're doing. We should actually make it a little bit bigger. There we go. I think that's good. Again, we're just going to shift the baseline a little bit here just to get it as close to being as level as possible. I'm not going to be too paranoid about that. Okay, now there is something else that I do want to mention and I do want to point out that's important for me to point out now before we get back into Premiere and have a whole bunch of work that we have to do. If you notice in the original animation, you could actually see that there was rips and tears in the Doom text and you could see through it to the background. Now this is something you could do in Premiere, but we're already in Photoshop, so why wouldn't we do it here? Well, let me show you how this is going to work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open this texture file. We're just going to open it with Photoshop and I'm going to select it and I'm going to copy it. We're going to head back to our Doom text. And what I want to do is I want to come in and I want to add a layer mask to it. Okay. Now this is where things kind of fall off the rails a little bit and people get a little bit frustrated because what I want to do is I want to take this texture and I want to paste it onto this layer mask. So what most people do is they simply try to select it and they try to control or command V to paste and the layer just ends up getting pasted on top of the layer that we actually want to have this mask applied to. I'm just going to undo what I just did there. So how do we get around that? What we're going to do is we're going to hold option on the Mac, alt on Windows, and we're now going to select our layer mask. Now you'll notice as soon as I do that, the screen switches. It's no longer showing me the text layer, it's actually showing me the layer mask. And what I'm going to do now is now I'm going to paste this element onto the layer mask, okay? And what we're going to do now is head right back to the layer by pressing Alt or Option back to the layer, the text layer, the doom layer that we want to see. And I'm now going to change the background color because it's a little bit deceiving here because it basically just looks like we have our text with our 
black here, much like we had as our texture element here, like that. But you'll notice that if I take the background color, and what I'm going to do is just change it here. We're just going to select all of it here, okay? And we're going to make it this red color here. So let's fill that layer with the foreground color. And you'll now see that this is transparent. We can actually see through. So we know that our layer mask is doing exactly what we expect it to do. Now, the reason I like doing this in Photoshop is just because it's so fast. You'll see we added the layer mask, we held Option or Alt, we clicked on it, we pasted, boom, we are done. No need to get in and to do, you know, masking or anything like that, linear luma keys, you know, track matting, anything like that in Premiere. Why wouldn't you do it all in Photoshop if you're right here and it only takes three clicks of the mouse? I'm just going to remove that background element now. And what I'm going to do is just save this out. We're going to use right to the desktop a PNG file because it's going to maintain all of the transparency. So I'm just going to call this Doom Wordmark. Okay. I'll say save. We'll just put the compression as none, the interlacing as none. We're just going to hide Photoshop. We'll Command or Alt Tab back into Premiere. I'm just going to right click. We'll say import. Of course, our Doom wordmark is what we're importing, and we're going to take that, we're going to drag it and drop it down into our composition, or as I should probably call it, a timeline, because we are in Premiere and not in After Effects. And now what we can do, if we find our text element to be a little bit too big, we can simply now just come in, scale it down just a little bit here, simply click on the motion parameter and reposition it towards the top of the screen. I'm just going to give this a very quick render to render this. And once it's done rendering, you'll now see that this Doom element looks pretty darn close to that load screen from the video game. And we did it very quickly and very easily inside of Premiere with a little help from Adobe's Photoshop. Now, don't forget, if you want some great free 4K elements to work with, you can head on over to 4kfree.com and to check out our entire product line and some great tutorials to get you up and running nice and quick, you can check us out at rampantdesigntools.com.